Shall we talk over things first, or shall I begin the ball rolling? Shall I first talk, and then we can have a dialogue? We're talking about school, aren't we? Parents, relation with schools, and the children, and so on. First of all, I like to point out, if I may, that this is not a sectarian school, not some freakish, uh, out of the date or any of those kind of school. I think, as Mr. Mark Lee and I have been connected with schools for many years, considering what the world is, I think what these schools should produce a totally different kind of human beings. human beings who are not American, Catholic, Protestant, Hindu, Buddhist, none of those, but unconditioned human beings, if it is possible. That, I feel, is the responsibility of a school of this kind, that when they leave the school, though they may have choose you know, to go to university, college, university, and so on, and get a degree and a job. But they leave the school, high school, highly intelligent, capable of meeting any challenge intelligently. And they may be gardeners, cooks, or prime ministers, or presidents, but that intelligence is operating all the time. I don't know how to, I don't know any of you, if I may say so. I haven't discussed any of these problems with you. But we have had, we have had, we have a school, four schools in India, one in Brockwood and one in here, one in Canada, Vancouver. All these schools are one body, though legally separated. They're all concerned primarily with the age, bringing about a different kind of mind in the child, a mind that's capable to work efficiently, academically or otherwise, who are highly intelligent and therefore respect human beings. And I don't feel these are ideals, these are facts, if it can be brought about, because I personally have an abomination of ideals, because they have no meaning at all. Ideals imply something in the future. But we are talking of being, bringing about children actually. educate them so that they are really total human beings, both emotionally, intellectually, and physically, so that they have, that they grow up in, into compassionate human beings. I don't know if you are interested in all this. And one of our difficulties is going to be that there is no authority, but I begin with that, 
Authority implies conformity. In authority there is fear, obedience, suppression of one's own capacity to observe, to think clearly, and so on. So where there is authority, politically or otherwise, in schools, there is the destruction of the of a mind flowering. And I do not know how far such a thing can be carried out in a school of this kind. And that depends on the teachers and the parents. And if the parents see the necessity of it, as well as the teachers, that authority implies imitation, conformity to a tradition, or to a pattern of living, the authority of one who knows and the uh, and giving what he knows to another. So the capacity to learn comes to an end. I wonder if we may go on. Is that all right? Because the school is a place where there is leisure. I believe the word school comes from the word leisure. So only when one has leisure one can learn. And if the, if the teacher or the parent is merely concerned in transforming what he knows and implanting in the child or the student, then that form of learning merely cultivates memory. Right? And when there is the operation of memory constantly, it becomes mechanical. Therefore, all activities become mechanical. We discuss all this outwards. And as modern society is almost becoming mechanical, and universities are conditioning human beings into a certain types of people, is it possible to educate children, students, who are really capable of learning, not mechanical learning, may I go into all this? Will it become difficult? Huh? I hope my language is all right, is it? There are two types of learning. All right, I'll go into it. <coughs> Learning and then acting. Right? I learn, that is, store up what I have facts and information, memory, and from that memory act. That's what we do, either through experience or through gathering information of being taught, that is, having learned, act, either skillfully or unskillfully. And the other is to go out, act and learn. Right? Both are a form of accumulating knowledge and then acting from knowledge. Right? Is this somewhat clear? I learn in, this, in a school, in a college, a university, that I store up all that I have learnt and then from that 
knowledge I act. And the other is to go to act and learn from acting. And so gathering knowledge too. So both are the same. You know, the communists, the Mao and the communists and others say, go out and learn, especially Mao and that whole group. Go out and learn. And the other school says, learn and then act. So both are cultivating knowledge. And therefore, if you are acting all the time upon knowledge, it becomes mechanical. Right? We'll go into this question if you want to afterwards. The other is, which, I'm, which we are proposing, is see what is implied in these both, in these two categories of learning. What is implied in the sense how mechanical it becomes. Always acting upon knowledge, which is knowledge which is past. Right? So you are always acting from what you already know. And therefore there is never freedom in action. Hmm? Wonderful. The other is which we are proposing is to have an insight in about these two. You understand? insight into the into the whole field of knowledge you must have heard of bronowski who has been talking he's dead now he's been talking on the bbc a great deal about a sense of man he according to him and his whole group the scientists really in fact say that man can ascend only through knowledge accumulate knowledge grow cultivate ascend more and more which means living acting from the past right because knowledge implies knowledge is the past there is no knowledge of the future. There is only knowledge of what I have already known. Right? So, to see the whole, into the whole area, into the whole field of knowledge and its implications, to see it is to have an insight into it. And acting from insight, not from Knowledge. I wonder if hmm? If we go into it, it's quite exciting. And is that possible? Is it possible to 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 educate children, students, and ourselves? to have an insight into things and acting from inside, not from knowledge. An insight is not storing up knowledge. I have an insight into the whole field of religion, say for instance, the whole area of religion which is belief, dogma, ritual, and experience based upon a conditioning and worshipping that which, we all, which man has already created, which he thought has created, into seeing into the whole 
field of religion is to have an insight into it, right? And acting from ins- from that insight, which means not having beliefs, not having rituals, not having dogmas, authority, but having an insight into religion is the highest form of religion. I wonder if I'm Are we meeting each other? So is that possible? That means the relationship between the student, the teacher and the parent undergoes a radical change. Though the parent and the teacher are giving information, they are giving information not from a pedestal, not from a person who says, I know, you don't know. Therefore authority and obedience and all the rest follows. But a relationship of mutual learning. You know, a mutual learning how to act. In life, isn't it? That's after all, all learning is how to act in life, right? If the teacher or the parent is giving information and cultivating that form of learning, which is acquired knowledge and act, hmm, or act and learn, both imply the storing up of knowledge and acting from that knowledge. Right? Now, can, can there be a relationship between the parent, the teacher and the student in which there is only the the exploration of insight? and not merely the cultivation of knowledge. You understand, sir? Am I conveying something? Sir? Just a minute. Let me finish the whole field of it. Can we have such a relationship with this children? that both of us are learning. Both of us, I won't use the word learning again, because both of us are trying to understand the non-mechanistic way of living, let's put it that way. Because knowledge implies, and the active from knowledge, is a mechanical process which has been going on for thousands of years, and that has not transformed man. And man is not ascending through knowledge. He may ascend to, he may go to the moon. That's not the ascent of man. He may have most extraordinary technological capacity, but that's not the ascent of man. That's only a very small side of man. The ascent of man implies a psychological freedom, psychological flowering. And can we, in a school of this kind, where parents, teachers and children are involved totally, if that is so, Can we bring about this kind of relationship where authority as knowledge is totally put aside? Because if you examine, if you've gone into the... Every form of education is to condition a child, the 
Catholics have done it very well for centuries, the Indians and the Hindus all over the world, to condition the child to act in a certain way, technologically, morally and psychologically. Right? What we are talking about, if you agree, if you think it's worthwhile, and if that's the right way of living, to totally uncondition the human mind so that it is capable of having knowledge technologically, but having an insight and acting in human behaviour. That's one part. And also, can in the school can we can there be res- respect for each other? Respect implies either you respect someone through fear, hmm, or through affection, care, love, compassion. Unfortunately, as far as I have seen in this country, there is no respect for anybody, right? Would that be accurate, if, or am I exaggerating? Not even out of fear? Huh? Not even out of fear? Ah! I said that. I said there is respect for through fear. That's not respect. Can there be in the school respect not out of fear, but of care, affection, love, compassion? That means courtesy. That means behaviour. I respect you, therefore I get up. I open the door for you. Whether you're a man, woman, child, doesn't matter. I respect you. If I do it out of fear, then it's, it's rather a shoddy little affair. So behaviour becomes, is born out of respect. Would you? Can that, is that possible? Or we are all saying, you are old-fashioned and I am new-fashioned. You are old-fashioned, therefore you get up for a lady or when you are introduced to somebody. But I, man and woman being equal, I don't get up. I put my feet on the desk while you come inside and shake hands with me. You follow? That kind of irresponsible behaviour, basing on personal uh, conditioning, whereas respect out of love, compassion, care, in that, having no fear, there is consideration, there is, you follow, sir, the whole thing changes. It's not then uh, the old generation and the modern generation. Now, is that possible in the school? Another thing of all of this, mm-hmm. 
של הגורם הזה. Because you learn much more through observation than through a book. Observation of nature, observation of one's own behavior, one's own thoughts, feelings. So that through observation there is heightened sensitivity. And that sensitivity declines as one grows older, because one has ceased to observe, and so one loses a relationship with nature, and so one loses one's relationship with human beings. Am I talking all this Greek or hmm? we're all with us? with each other. So relationship becomes very important. To eliminate the image the student has about the teacher, the educator, and the educator has the image about the student, or the parent. So that we are related not through images, but actually, not through conclusions or ideas and patterns, but related in every, every day of li- one's life in actuality. Hmm? Is that possible? Yeah. Because otherwise we are just turning out, you know, like other schools, other univers- colleges, other universities. Human beings who are really, you know what they are, we don't have to tell you. Violent, stupid, you know, all that's going on in the world. So now let's talk of, discuss this a little bit. So it's first, knowledge. Then respect, then relationship. Right? Can we discuss this? Have a dialogue about it. Pardon? Can we go into what it means to explore insight together? We're doing. We're going to discuss it. We'll, uh, is one aware that we are acting from an experience? Hmm? From experience means knowledge. Therefore, acting always from the past. I have had an experience as an engineer because I have studied engineering in college, uh, university, I have acquired certain skill, and I store that, skill, that knowledge is stored in the brain and act according to that knowledge, expand it, learn more about it, but it is always from background of knowledge. And so knowledge is the, is the past, right? Be, don't agree with me. I mean, <laughs> be, you see, in this way you are going to have an insight into it. You see it for see, see the fact that is, we are acting from knowledge, whether you learn first and then act, 
or act and then learn, which comes from both the same thing. And so knowledge is always a limiting factor. It's not a, a factor of freedom. Not the freedom which says, I'll do what I want. That's not freedom at all. So, are you, is one aware of this fact that you and your children, the teachers, are acting from the know? And so they never see the new. You know, whether they are young or old. When you see that clear, that's an insight, isn't it? Huh? So from that insight you act. I wonder, you understand? Not my words, but the, the significance of it. This awareness is the doing, isn't it? It's, uh somebody's like you have to you're doing something when you're aware you're, you're actually it's almost like you're holding back you have to watch very closely not to you know we're, I think we're so quick and we justify so quick we, we seem to put things into words so quick and, and I think this awareness is it's really a, a holding back and just watching very closely no, why do you, if I may ask, why do you say holding back? Because we, this conditioning seems to come so quick. I know. They be concerned with the quickness of response, yeah, which is born from conditioning. And the justification that, you know, <coughs> that's part of the conditioning also, is so we seem to justify our actions so quickly instead of examining them, really, really examining them and never mind the justifications that we seem to be involved in, in words. So much in our actions, we seem to justify them so quickly instead of just being aware and watching them, our actions in our relationships. It's the doing, uh, the way I see it. This actual awareness is the doing, and uh, getting away just, from. Just wait, sir. I don't know what you mean by awareness. The watching, the watching, <coughs> now, the whole thing. Now, itself. how do you watch? No, sorry, I, I was very clear. Both in order to understand each other, yeah. we must know the meaning of each word. Right. Now, what do you mean by saying watching? What? I may give it a different meaning. And Mostly it's it. watching yourself, your responses to what is, what is now, happening in front of you. Now, who is it that's watching? No, 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 that's no, the no, 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 sir. Don't try, go back to awareness. Right. You say watching. Right, right. Being aware. Now, watching. We leave awareness for the moment. Okay. Watching. Okay. I'm watching the nature, the wind, the trees, the sunlight, and so on. I'm watching you and watching me. Now, what do you mean by watching? Observing. And who is it that's observing? Is the observer different from the observed? No, no, the observer. No, is no, go slowly, sir. Be careful. I mean, this no, 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 I see that. I see it very clearly. That the observer is the observed. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm trying to say. That this is what, you know, this is the doing, the seeing that the observer is the observed, and everything, you know, in the, the observing. Everything I see out there is me. I am the world. Yes. Yeah. Now, so you are observing without the me. Right, you're observing. Ah, yeah. big, big, huh? I see that, yeah. Can you, if you are a parent or a teacher, can you help the student to observe without the me? The me being all the responses, the conditioning, all this. And the only way to do that is to do it yourself. And, uh, therefore, 
Are you, not you, I'm not asking you personally, are we doing it? That's what I'm saying. The awareness is the doing. Uh, we have no, to do no. it unless we do it. I don't think the children can do it. Of course. This is so thing. are we... We have to do it. That's it. Are we saying whatever we say to the child, we are doing. So there is not hypocrisy in it. This is what I'm saying. Not to justify. That's it. That's what I that's want what to get saying. at. We seem to justify what we say instead that's of it. That's watching it. it. It very closely. So there is, if I say to the ch- my son, don't smoke and I smoke, <laughs> it becomes rather silly. I take drugs and say, don't take drugs. So in a relationship between the parent and the teacher, is the teacher and the parent doing something contrary to what he is saying to the child, to the student. And the student pretty quickly spots the hypocrisy. Oh, yeah. If you're not the, the Therefore, he says, he doesn't pay any attention. Right. And if we're hitting them with conditioning, then we're conditioning them. So, that's just it. That's what I'm, I'm asking. So we're not doing it. So, I'll come back to the point. Are we acting from learning, from knowledge, and therefore always limiting action? I mean, are we aware of that? Are we, do we do this? Do I realize that I'm functioning from the background of knowledge? Yes, sir. Uh, go into it. That's the whole problem. Unless we see that, we're, we're still in it. We're justifying Therefore, how, we're, we're still conditioning our children. If I'm in a school, what, how shall I help the student to understand this? We have to do it. I'm doing it. I'm, we're doing it now, sir. We're doing it now. Go into it. Now. How, uh, I'm, I'm your student. Hmm? How will you help me? And I, no, no, you're doing that, but you're in a class. Mm-hmm. You're in a, with a few children. How will you help me? I can't help you. No, no, you can. I'm, so you can't see. Then what's the relationship between you and me as a student? But, but being, just being there, being aware. Uh, you're doing it, sir. You're doing it all the time. Yeah. But how will you convey and help me to understand the whole significance of acquiring knowledge which is what we call education. <clears throat> On one side I must have technological knowledge of every kind if I can, in order to earn a livelihood or not earn it, so on. So how, am, how are you going to help me to understand this whole problem? You are doing it. Obviously, I hope you are doing it. As a teacher, how will you help me? You understand my problem, sir? I'm asking you. No matter, I'm, I'm asking something, if you forgive me, I'm asking something different. A school, a college, a university is concerned with acquiring knowledge so that you can get a job, so that you can marry how, you know, the whole modern existence. That's what the universities exist for. And if I, as a parent, see the whole meaning of knowledge, which is acting from the past, hoping thereby to ascend, go beyond, and all the rest of it, and I, and I see how false that is. There is no freedom in it. There is, it's always moving in the field of the known, which is mechanical. How am I to convey to the student this question? Well, he is acquiring knowledge all the time. You follow? I'm teaching mathematics. Mm. 
geography, history, whatever it is. I am teaching him. He must know mathematics, which is acquiring <coughs> tremendous information about the whole problem of mathematics. And I, did, and I tell him, you must learn not only mathematics, history, geography, and so on. And so he says, what are you, why should I have any other thing? You follow? I want to be pure. Yeah, not to make the mathematics more so important. The important thing is to learn to understand but, but, himself. Uh, no, but he must have also the yeah, other. He must have that. So how will you help him, sir? Come face it. So the acquisition of the, of the mechanical knowledge is very quick. And when you start talking about these other things, that becomes knowledge as well. It's psychological. Therefore, everything is translated into knowledge. Right. But it you follow, sir? See the danger of it. But, but if you're in that state, I'm a mathematician, so I was taught, if, if one is in an unconditioned state... I know, no, not No, 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 but wait, 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 on that day, I know, it'll, not just, a, it'll no. just transmit naturally. No, no, not on that. No, sir, you're making freedom on one day is not freedom. Okay. Hmm? How will you, as a student, you are a teacher of mathematics, I am your student, tell me how you will help me to have great deal of knowledge on one side, mathematics, and yet be free to act without knowledge. You follow? Without yes, I follow. Well, I think in the teaching, I... Show me. I'm doing okay, it now. Okay, we start drawing figures. Do mm. you want me to do it with you, or as if you're a two-year-old? I'm, I'm, with... I'm your student. Oh, and you really want me to do... Yeah, of course. Well, oh, I mean... I want it. Well, I would start... We would... I would, first, I wouldn't initiate it till you came to me and said, you know, you wanted to learn some math. I'm sitting there doing math, and you come in and say, I want to do math, too. Because that's... I, wait. I, my no, God. no, but I start telling you, but, but the thing is, it's my attitude, because as you ask for the knowledge, I give you some. Then we explore the ideas together. Then maybe you have a better idea than I do, and it, it goes off into learning together. So, learn. If I don't have the attitude that the knowledge is important, that will come out, because then you will so, have some ideas and give them back to me. Yeah, so so you, are, you, well, see, you see the importance of not only having knowledge, but also the unimportance of it. Yes. You see it. Wait a minute, sir. Yes. You see it very clearly. Hmm? Yeah, I guess on that the relation to the, the ones further down the line, I don't, on this one I think I have the, the insight. See yeah. this very clearly. Yes. That knowledge is necessary, hmm? and also knowledge is not necessary in a certain psychological yes. area. Hmm? Yes, I think I have, I, I have that firm That's insight. Right. right. How are you going to help me as a student to understand this very complex problem? It's not a simple problem, you understand? Right. Very complex. Okay. We start doing the math. You come and say you want some knowledge. So I, I don't say anything because I'm a poor little boy. Come on, sir. No, I'm sitting there. No, no, the fact was I'm doing math. Well, then I'd wait till you came up to me and you said to say something. No, I don't come up to you. There is a class. Oh, I don't, I don't, that's hard, let's assume you come up to me, assume I'm doing math after class, because this is the case that happened, and you come up to me, and you say, what are you doing, you're doing math, I want to learn some math. So I sort of said, I just explain what I'm doing, and there's some figures, and then my son ran off and got some uh, blocks, and then he started showing me shapes, and now the idea is, actually he had some ideas, he said, what about this and what about that, and then you have to be open to learning from that. All right, all right, proceed. So I look, okay, proceed. so there's your mind and my mind, and if you're intense in what we're doing, you're going to have some good ideas, and this thing flows back and forth, so at least now we're to the level of at least we're learning together. Right, proceed okay? from there. Okay, then as we learn together, the, it's this, this thing is going on, uh, you are still, so you're not meeting my point, okay. forgive me. Well, I don't think you tell him anything. I think you just live that viewpoint, and it's picked up. And I don't think I you may should... pick it up wrongly. We generally do. No. Most, not 
too many people believe what you said. I, I, I prove But if the teachers absolutely have insight and believe what you say, you'll pick it up from them without, without any words. Because they'll be living, they'll be acting. I'm saying you have to act that. You have to act as if you can learn from somebody else. You're not the teacher, that it's a two-way thing. That's understood. And then as the ideas no. go up, the your attitude shows that you don't take knowledge as the only basis of action. That in the mathematics, there's a the freedom of thought. And thought is never free. Okay. My, your <laughs> so, words are better than mine. I know, but no, so I think it comes out of the attitude. If the person has the insight, and they're doing the math, that, and you're the student, you'll pick it up, it. That's with no it. words. Therefore, sir, have you, forgive me, sure. have you the insight into the whole field of knowledge? Not various types of knowledge, but knowledge, which means to know. To know implies the past, I know. So it's a very complex thing, this, you know, to yes. act or to understand where knowledge has its place and psychological, and where psychologically it is a danger. Will you help me, as a student, to see the psychological danger of knowledge? You wait, go yeah. slow. You follow? Yeah, I follow. Well, I think it's by example. Then, then I copy. If you become my example, then I imitate you. Then you're my authority. You're my guru. But if the example is like in the middle of a math discussion where I'm the teacher and you start as a student, we reverse roles because you've worked on this thing and it comes uh, the other uh, way. No, no. At least we reversed. I don't think you can say it verbally. I'm going to point out. You can't yeah. say it, so come, go slowly. Okay. Do you, as a parent or the teacher, educator, have an insight into the field of knowledge, that is, where it is absolutely necessary. Of course, I know where I live, though I drive to my home or walk to my home. I know how to run a mechanical car. But if I say, I know my wife, which is psychological, then the danger begins. Then I know my wife implies I, I know her. I have an image, I have a picture, I have a conclusion. The conclusion is my knowledge about her. Therefore, there is no relationship at all. Now, how will you please see the difficulty no. of conveying this to a student who, who can't you follow? He has no idea of all this. He calls, he has, he says, father and mother, hmm? like and dislike, frightened or etc. Et how they have treated him, and he remembers all that, right? And right. he's acting from that. Right. So how will you help him to free himself from all that? That's the function of education. Right. Not merely to give him some stupid exam, you know, all the rest of it. Sure. Well, you can try to tell him. How will you tell me? How okay. will, See, how will not, you tell me? Now, I'm not going from sort of a polished speech. I'm just going into the past, like when I've had students like, how you tell them what you just said. You just say, you know, uh, or if somebody's doing mathematics all the time and you're getting along really well and creating it, you 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 might point out that you know that their their personal life that the, it may not be worth the, the sacrifice that they should go out and relate to other people. 
No, sir. No, sir. You're missing my... I'm sorry. Forgive me. You're missing my point. I love my parents. I, I say as a student, if you ask them, yes, I love my parents. Which is what? I understand. Which is, when he says, I love my parents, what is implied in that? Usually, the ones I talk to say they don't love their parents, but I mean, it's the same. I know. Going through it, I'm a... Well, okay, there's sometimes there's fear and rebellion. Oh, wow, you're really going a long way. That just um, uh, You don't... It's a very complex problem, sir. Yeah. That's why I'm. we are trying to understand what is implied in all this. Not complete. To any conclusion, but what is implied? What is the substance of all this? Okay, you're saying how do you, as a teacher, well, I, in concrete cases, I mean, at the university, I'll be doing math. These people, well, uh, and they really don't you like see, their parents. Look, sir, you say I'm a mathematic teacher. Okay. okay. And you are my student. Mm -hmm. Actually, you look very nice, like. <laughs> I'm a mathematics teacher, and you're my student. I know mathematics implies knowledge. Learning, I've learned it from my professor, and I've passed some examinations, and I've got a degree, and that degree gives me a capacity to teach in a school, and I want money, so I'm here. And you're my student. And I I've suddenly seen, because I've heard somebody say, look what knowledge does. I haven't quite understood it, hmm? but I'm trying to c capture the significance of it. So I'm thinking a great deal about it. I'm watching it. I'm going into it in my when I'm walking, when I go take the bus, sit in the bus or ride. It's I'm what I'm seeing the implications of this tremendous problem. So I'm a mathematic teacher. I haven't totally captured the whole thing, but I'll capture it in talking with the student. You yeah. I'm exposing my own thoughts to the student. That student doesn't know that I'm exposing, because poor chap, I'm sure I expose it. Too much for him. So I talk. I say, now, I'm not going to teach you mathematics for the moment. Hmm? Right. I'm going to, we're going to talk over how to get a relationship. Right. Hmm? Are you, do you love your parents? The instinctive response of this poor little chap is yes. And if you, I'll, I'll talk to him about it, hmm? about this, what is implied in love. Are you frightened? Have got images about that? You know, go right. into it with them. Right. So, I will say, look, you are acting from no, from the known. Okay. Hmm? I said, now that's enough for this morning. Just let him assimilate a little bit of it. So I go into mathematics. Next day, I said, look, let's go into that other thing much more. So I'm, we are working together, I'm helping him, seeing, showing him how we act from images, from symbols, from conclusions, from opinions, from <coughs> saying, you are old, I'm young, therefore I think differently, you think differently. If I show him all this by talking it over with him, which is I want him to understand this. Right. Mm -hmm. So I say, look, there is knowledge yeah. and there is freedom from knowledge. You get it. You, uh, have, have you done this much? I, I, I try that sometimes, and sometimes it goes good. Sometimes uh, there's uh, a disaster. I, I, oh, well, that's I, I won't do it. Hmm. I have that's that it. poor chap with me for the next six months, eight months. So I'm going to work at it the afternoon, slowly, patiently, with care, because I'm. This is my, I'm interested in this. This is my life, sure. not mathematics. Sure, sure. Sir, sometimes they're quicker than us. Huh? Sometimes I think the children are quicker than us. 
Oh, and they pick it up quicker sometimes than we do. Ah. Their alertness uh, to different things. So I said, look, don't draw a conclusion from what I say. Right? Well, learn, learn about yourself, how you are related to your parents. To your, watch what relationship means. So that if you are acting on relationship from the past, hmm? you see, yes, it's my wife, I know all about her. Silly. So, is relationship which means memory, as it is understood, which is remembrance, is love a remembrance? No, I won't go into that. Sir, in this school, we are working with children who are very young, and it's often impossible to go into a dialogue. Of course, I, is, I know that. <coughs> Therefore, I create the atmosphere. Well, you and I as teachers, educators, parents, we have talked a great deal about this, right? Yes. Not occasionally, every day if necessary. Yes. We're going to it, not as I know and you don't know. Together we're going to go into this problem of this whole field of knowledge, which is related to relationship. Right? Yes. So, in talking it over together, we, we are a serious group of people. The atmosphere here may be different from at your home, hmm? but when you come here, you're serious. So we discuss, we go into it all the time. But that's what the parents say. How do you convey it to a young child? I am doing it. I'll show you. How do I convey what? What do I convey? Do I, what do you I want me to convey? to a child who has, isn't at a level where the he is not. almost abstraction of this is comprehensible? Much too much for the poor child. Yes. I know so that. what is it that reaches a young child? That is so I say, look, I, what is important when they are very young, what is important? Like two or five, right, sir? What is very important? The atmosphere is certain. Which means what? Huh? Security. What? Security. Now, like, security. <clears throat> what do you mean by that word? Because I may give a different meaning and you may give a different meaning to it. What do you mean by security? Physical security? It's part of it. part of it. Therefore, psychological security? How will you give psychological security to a child? To a student, in student of half, five, ten, how will you give him the feeling that it's, when he comes here he's completely psychologically secure? I'm asking you, sir, no, I'm asking you, you're going to have the school at, grow at, at the other end. He comes there, how are you going to create this feeling in the child, in the student, when he comes there, that he's totally, completely secure, protected? He has to trust the people around him. I, 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 so no, I'm, you are you are the you are the beastly parents or beautiful parents. But answer this you question. Can't put it on the child. To no. Expect him to feel secure. No, of course he's out. He has to put him to that. So how will you make him feel this? Maybe you have to start by saying when he's not feeling secure. When he's huh? Maybe you have to start with saying when he's not feeling secure. No, look, <laughs> you've got school there, right? Next Tuesday you're all going over there. How will you create the sense or the feeling or the atmosphere that when he comes there he knows 
by Job is they are protected. They are, I'm secure here. How do you create it? A consistency? Huh? A consistency? No, madam, no. no, no. Just look. Sir, if he hears me listen to him, I think that... I, child is out of it, sir. Leave him out. Because poor chap was going to... We have to do it, yeah. We have to create the environment for him. Well, security comes from, from inside, and so if the staff and the parents are secure, the children will be secure. If we're leaving him out of it. No, sir, please. When you word, use the word secure, what does it mean? What do, so what was you said just now? Students need security. Children need security, which they do. Otherwise, they, everything goes wrong in their life. They need security. Now, what do you mean by that word? To be secure. Well, a sufficient amount of inner peace. In no, no, no. Sudden. You're right. I think it's a, it comes from inside. It's not an external thing. It's not what it is. No, sir, you're missing. Oh. How do you create this atmosphere, this sense that when he comes, he's welcome, he's secure, he's that you are caring for him, that you are protecting him, that he says he can do what he likes. That is true. That no, 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 you're missing my. The, the people he comes to. Those that they do care for him, they are secure. Ah, uh, therefore. And they do love him. So that means what? Do you? Pardon? Do you, when you have your school there or in your house, or you give him security? No, no, it's not. It's not outside. Security comes from within. No, darling, right. sir, Wait. you're Sorry. missing my. <laughs> Sorry. I, we said security implies no fear. Okay. It implies that you are really caring for him. Okay. For his clothes, for his food, the manner he eats. Please listen for the manner how he eats food. Hmm? Right. How polite, whether he's polite, respectful, kind. You follow? You are, you are, that means protection. That right. means security for right. him. So how will you create that? You or the older are responsible for this, not the child. Not the student, because he will follow. So you are responsible for it. How will you bring this about? So that moment he comes, he says, I'm at home. Not the home where he's come from, where he's been neglected. You, you go off to your office, the wife goes off to do something else and leave him. Right. The, right. Hmm? So he feels dreadfully insecure there at home, criticized, beaten, you know, all the rest of it. You must be like your elder brother, you are not, you are this, you are that, and all the rest of it. So he doesn't feel secure at home. Here he comes to a school where, he, where we were all concerned, we are all concerned to see that he's completely secure, which means no fear, that you really care how he dresses, whether he's clean, whether how he eats, how he sits, how he talks. You know, you care. Yeah, but do we really say that with that care, or is it a lot of it seems to be said with conditioning and therefore we're confusing the child? A lot of things are being told at him. No, I, I am not telling a thing for the child. I'm just thinking of dressing, how you behave. I am... So it has to be the care there first. I am, that's why I'm, I am saying that, sir. Mm, this is what are you concerned about the child's security? That he should be free from fear? Hmm? That he should know where love people, care for people, hmm? you, you care for you yeah, as a parent, perfect. as a teacher. It's a terrible world. He needs this. Sir, I, I'm not 
We are concerned. It's a terrible world. You don't have to tell me. Yeah, all right. Well, I live well, I'm concerned for my children. This is why I'm saying that I do care about my children. So you want, if you care for their children, you will care for their taste. Hmm? What kind of clothes they put on, what kind of food they eat, what kind of attitude they have, how respect for you care. Now, will you at the school give this sense that he's protected? that he's secure, like a marvellous tree that's secure in the wind. Well, sir, so that's the first thing, right? Secure. Psychologically as well as physiologically, he feels that when he comes that you are really caring for him. Not that you should become the most extraordinary B.Sc. or M.Sc. or M.D., but you are caring for him. That is not only caring intellectually, physically, you follow? He knows that that somebody is looking after him. My God, sir! Because, you know, when a child or a man feels completely secure, uh, his whole attitude towards life changes. I don't know if you were if you read Waters, Mind in the Waters. Though it's all about whales. They have lived under great depth, completely secure, till man came along with his harpoons and all the rest of it. They have killed fifty million whales, more. So, those whales have an extraordinary mind, I believe, because they have been so completely secure. You understand, sir? So, if that is what's going to happen in this school, where the child is going to be completely and totally secure, that means no comparison. Right, sir? No grades. Right? No saying, well, you're in lower class, higher class. You follow? so that you remove all sense of competition, where everywhere around him he says, compete, 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 compete. Be ambitious, drive, aggressive. If you can't do this, I don't see the point of having this school here at all. If you say, if you ask, have you, has this, have you succeeded in other schools? I said no. But here, parents, teachers, and students together in this, right? It's not you send these children away and then you go all your way. You are concerned. There in those schools in India and in Brockwood. They're, the parents send them, and parents carry on with their usual life. And when the children go back, they say, my God, you know all the rest of it. So will you make them feel, the moment they come, that they are really cared for. Don't you see, sir, what it does to the mind? 
It's up to you if you. I feel like we're talking about home also. The moment they come here, they have to feel tremendously secure. But we have to do that at home also. Isn't that the challenge? That of we course, have? of course. How can you do it at home when you are occupied? Not you personally. I'm talking about generally with your problems. Hmm? With the husband, if you have a husband, who is ambitious, get on. Hmm? Quarrels, disagreements, each occupied with his own problems. So you say, well, let's take him to the school and leave him there, for God's sake. That's, please, that's what has happened. Let, let, at least let's keep him out of this, our mess. So when he comes from to school, he makes the mess. And so he says, oh, those parents, I have no relationship with them, and goes off, runs away, or does some, takes the drugs, or the, you know what's happening here. What you're saying is, unless each one of us does it ourselves, we're not really going to create much So, sir, that's what I'm saying. Much here. It's going to be like you say in Brockwood, in Brockwood it's not really working that well, because the parents are off living some totally other different life, kind. and you know the children. Are stu just because the parents are out there, it doesn't mean that they don't feel what is going on out there, and their parents are still a part of it. And this is this in itself is conditioning the children. No, sir. <coughs> look, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Look, look. You and I agree. See the reason why you and I mustn't take drugs. Right? You and I see the reason, not prejudice, why alcohol is bad for one's brain. You and I see quarrelling at home is destructive. Hmm? Right? So, we have children, you and I. And so we, are, we send them, we create a school so that we are part of that. Hmm? So we, we create at home security, we create at school security. So that you follow up what it does to one's mind, to one's being when you're completely secure. You're not violent. That's what I'm saying. You gotta do we gotta do it. We all hey, have do to it, do it. For God's yeah. sake, you've got an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm saying. Unless we do it, uh, I don't see the, children. the foundation says we'll create the buildings. We'll cre you follow, mm. create it. So does the, does the security itself decondition? Partly, because these children come from the outside yeah. before they come to open, yeah. and we seem to spend a lot of our time Decon administ yeah. administering psychological first aid to yes, them. yes. Even though there may be a secure home and a secure school, they're already conditioned by their parents. They're already conditioned by their stu the friends they have at home. They're already conditioned by going down to the village, seeing the drinks, the yeah. vulgarity no, of it all. No, it there it is. You've already conditioned the child, so he comes to the school conditioned. Regardless of where he grew up, as long yeah. as he's been in this world, he's conditioned. He comes conditioned. Yeah, of course. Does that mean to say that we're supposed to create security for a conditioned being? No, sir. No. No. Let's discuss it, this yes. problem, because it's again rather complex. We, our children are conditioned, yes. whether we are secure or we are not. We are we give him security at home or not. We meet other students. You follow all the other boys and girls, you know what they are like. <coughs> so they are conditioned. Hmm? And we, we are responsible as educators and parents to see that they are not conditioned. 
to help them not be conditioned. Yes. To unconditioned. What? To unconditioned. No, to con- not don't. <laughs> to, uh, We're saying they're they're already coming conditioned. I'm saying they are already come to a school conditioned. So you're saying our job is to help them not be conditioned. Our job is if you agree, or if you I see the Im- if you see the importance that the child should not be conditioned, which means ourselves not be conditioned. Saying we want to undo that conditioning or have them see what that conditioning is. Help him to see what that condition does. And therefore, because he sees, he understands, he'll uncondition himself. I am condi- grown up, <coughs> I am conditioned myself because I see the absurdity of it, the stupidity of it, the irrationality of it. Right? right? So I want to help him. So how do I do it? What? How? Not how. What shall I do? Well, we have said we must care. We must huh? care for the child. No, leave for the moment. We'll come to that. That's implied. Yes. Well, I care for the child so enormously. I must, I must have an insight into the character or being of the child. No, not yet. No. Don't go into that yet. Look, I care enormously for the child. Yes. I care intensely <coughs> that he should be unconditioned. Yes. Which means I'm unconditioning myself. Yes. Right? Right? Yes. I care. I, I, to me it's a burning thing that I should be free of all this beastly stuff. Yes. So what shall I do? How shall I tackle this problem with this children? He's my son, he's my daughter, and I'm also educated. If I'm good at education, all parents are not good at teaching, right? Yes. So I happen to be good at teaching, therefore I'm <coughs> in the school. Hmm? So how shall I help him to uncondition himself? Not, I want to uncondition him. Yes. If I do, then I'll create a pattern for him. So what shall I do? I must leave open in his life. No, 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 no. You don't lay down laws. <laughs> I must. Yes. Let's find out. I must see his mind. No, sir, no, sir. Look, first of all, do you know what, con- uh, what it means to be conditioned? It means to be given beforehand. No, sir, do you know, no. Do I know what it means to be conditioned? Am I aware that I am conditioned? Do I feel it? No, I'm aware. Do I know? Do I... F- uh, mm, mm? So, it is inescapably clear to me that I am conditioned. Wait, I'm conditioned as a Hindu. Hmm? Yes. Uh, from a child. I'm conditioned as a... Uh, etc. It's a by dozen incidents in Europe, in France, in Italy, and all over the world. I'm conditioned. Hmm? Yes. Am I aware? of this conditioning influences around me and how I have been conditioned. Or do I take it for granted that I am conditioned? You understand, sir? I understand the difference between you. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, I am aware I I see the influences around me. Tradition hmm, in India for thousands of years, and so on. All these influences are bearing upon me all the time. That is, it raises a question, which is, is it possible not to be influenced? Which means, is it possible to resist all influence? Right? Which means, when you resist, you create a barrier, which becomes the conditioning. I wonder if you understand this. 
So am I resisting conditioning or am I watching the various factors, influences that are conditioning? My, the words the parents, the older people use, the dress, the food, the climate, the literature, the newspaper, right? Everything is being poured into me. The tremendous propaganda that's going on to buy this, not to buy that, or become be a Catholic, you must be do this, you must do that. You follow? Yes. Tremendous pouring into this poor mind. I can't examine each one of them, can I? It's impossible. It's impossible. Impossible. So what shall I do? Yes, we have all the same common, quite right. So what shall I do? If I watch my response to the reward. So I live in America. I'm brought up as an American. Drink, drugs, the pleasure-seeking sexual appetites, the vulgarity. You follow what's going on around me? I'm an American. And I've, all that has conditioned me. Hmm? My American way of life, freedom to do what I like. Yes. All that is conditioned. What shall I? I am aware of that. Now, how shall I be free of all that? What shall I do to be free of all that? Okay, let's let's try going. On. Just going to go slow, but let's. First of all, try laying some groundwork. We've got a group of children. Say, no, let's not children. <laughs> okay, I know, I understand. I want, I want to lay some groundwork. We've got a group of children that are somewhere between 7 and 14 years of age, and we've got ourselves. We're both conditioned. So we say we want to come up with a, an entirely different type of individual, both the children and yourself. Absolutely. I've got no point in having such a school. Right. So that means I don't know how to start. We're going to do it now. Okay, now wait. wait. <laughs> so now I'm doing it. I don't, I don't know how to start. So I'm going to explore with this youngster. That means what? Not with the... You see... With the youngster and myself. That, that's implied. Not, okay, not with the both. youngsters yet. We just uh, first learn, if I may point out, first find out what to do, how to do, uh, find out if it is possible to uncondition. You follow? Find out, inquire. Now we are doing that now. Hmm? Are we then I, when, when I meet the child, student, I can then help him, I help each other to further the unconditioning. If I start, look, if I start at school with the child, say, I don't know and you don't know, huh? right? Okay. What happens to the child? <laughs> Immediately, feels my God, what? <laughs> he feels terribly insecure. It's very simple, sir. We, so, leave the child student out for the moment. We'll bring him later. Do you? And I are aware that we are conditioned. Obviously, you are, right? Now, what shall we do? Is this, listen, sir, is this awareness an intellectual concept of being conditioned? Concept. Or in actuality. You understand? There's a difference. Huh? There is a big difference between the intellectual and the actual. That's what I'm asking. A verbal, a verbal acceptance, which is intellectual, 
a conclusion which you are accepting, or an actual fact of saying yes. You've gone through it yourself. A actual it. fact, not yes. going. It is so. Mm. So if you are actually aware that I am, if I am actually aware I am unconditioned, I'm conditioned, what do I mean by that word, conditioned? I mean I am what gives me pleasure. Huh? I am what gives me pleasure. That's what I mean by conditioned. I am? That I am what gives me pleasure. In a, not only that, sir. So what do you mean by condition? All my responses are already there, and I respond to any external stimuli. Go on, sir. Go deeper, sir. So that looks. So I am conditioned to be an American. Hmm? Just take from the beginning. The word American, right? the flag, the whole idea of being an American, affluent, to do what one likes, hmm? to enjoy life. Hmm? No, don't think seriously about anything. Hmm? Pursue pleasure, affluent, if money, 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 pleasure, power, position. Right? The world is like that. Not only America, but everywhere is that. So that one of the factors of my conditioning. Right? Am I aware of this? <coughs> Am I vulgar? Hmm? Am I pursuing pleasure, power, money, sexual, s satisfy my sexual appetites? What I don't like, I run away from. I don't like my wife present, divorce her, marry quickly somebody else. Irresponsible, you follow? Bringing destruction on the children. So when it's really cold, all, please, all that's my conditioning. That is us, yeah. But when it's really caught in that, I, I am that. Yeah. I'm not. I am caught in that. It is. That is me. What shall I do? I realize, I am aware, I am cognizant, I am conscious, I am using all these words, um, that I am that. What's, then what? Then? If I don't understand this, how can I translate that to the child? My whole thought pattern, just as I receive this now, is a conditioning. But it makes a great difference if I see that how I receive what you say is already a conditioned factor or not. Yes. If I think I see something absolutely, then I'm then I'm already back in the old. In yeah, the old uh, that's pattern. why, Fritz. That's why I'm saying, is it a fact or a theory you accept? Is it a, is it an actuality or a conclusion which you understand intellectually? And say, yes, I'm like that. If you ask this question, it is very, very difficult to answer. I'm, I'm putting, making it. So I'm challenging you. I'm forcing you to look at it. This is something we have to deal with ourselves also, as far as the word and the nonverbal. So, I'm conditioned. So I say no. I realize I'm conditioned because I see my whole being is pursuing pleasure. Hmm? Right? I'm one of the factors I'm saying. I brought up in a society that's so corrupt beyond words, immoral. So it's immoral in India, in Europe, and here. Don't I mean it's the I same? So am I like that? You follow, sir? Am I like that? I am. Then what shall I do? Go on with it or break it. If one sees it totally. Wait, wait. 
<coughs> just go, I'm taking one thing. If I understand one thing, I've understood the totality. The first thing is to recognize that that's a fact, that we are all this. That's the beginning. Uh, that's that. the beginning. That's the beginning. We In that the... beginning, sir, there I'm a Protestant. Hmm? That's my conditioning. And I see I'm Protestant. What is You follow? Do I see it and break it? That is, the very seeing is the breaking, not I make an effort to break. That is insight and action. You will. Yeah, I've done that. So I'm, I'm broken one facet of it. Then I say, is money important to me? That's what the world wants. Money, money, sex, power, position, recognition. Are you follow? Mm. Uh. Then I see all this. So when I meet the child, I say, look, we're going to discuss conditioning, what it means, the word, the meaning of the word the implications of the world. I'll spend not one morning, but for the next six months or eight months he's with me, I'm going to discuss this every morning for ten minutes before I start the usual mathematics <coughs> or whatever it is. Sir, there's a um, <coughs> way that this can be approached from the outside and a way that it can be approached from the inside. and. It seems to me pointless to be approaching it from the outside, for an individual, for me to approach it from the outside, to think, am I conditioned? Uh, I hear what you're saying about conditioning. Does that apply to me? How do you mean, sir, approach it from the inside? <coughs> to, um, to comparing oneself to the idea of conditioning. As, yes, as opposed to comparing oneself to the idea. <coughs> I don't quite understand, sir. Well, when I approach it from the outside, I have an idea of what conditioning is, and I compare myself to that. Mm -hmm. When I approach it from the inside, I simply see that that's what I am. That's all. It's the same. That's all. That's all. But I, when I talk with somebody else about that... That's the expression of the outside. I, I run into... Nobody wants to talk... The child doesn't want to hear that. He doesn't want to... No, I'm not going to talk to him that way. I'm going to talk to him. It's quite... Sir, look, sir. First of all, the word is not the thing, right? Yes. Let's be quite clear. Yes. The word, tree, is not the tree. Hmm? So, I describe the tree, but the description not the tree. Right? Right. But... You take the description as being outside. Or else I look at a tree. Yes, or you look at it. But whereas I am... <coughs> the, the description is the outside, the perception is the inside. Yes. The perception is, I'm, I'm conditioned. Then the outside, I observe how it, how it has come about. And I see how it has come about. My parents, you follow the whole business, education, everything. So it's really, if I may point out, it is neither outside nor inside. It's all one movement, like it, like the sea going out and coming in, ebb and flow. It presupposes that the child cares about the inside, cares to perceive that area. Yes, sir. And uh, often, often that isn't the case. There may be... <coughs> he may see it instantly without my even talk. By one word he may see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then if he sees it, I'll ask him, now, you've seen it, now how will you proceed to unravel yourself, get out of it? I must. I wouldn't talk like this to a child. It would be too absurd. He wouldn't understand all right. that. 
But I, we talk together because we're grown up, we're using, supposed to be grown up, supposed to have words, supposed to be into, and all the rest of it, so I'm using these words. I say, now how, in what, what shall I do when I realize inwardly or round and outwardly, which is the same, I realize that I'm conditioned. I think you, if I actually realize, then the thing is finished. Then you need to approach the child. If I actually realize that I, that a Hindu, being a Hindu is a conditioning, actually realize it, because it's separate on all the rest of it, it's finished. Okay, but I'm saying now that you've seen that it that and it's finished for you, then you have this child in front of you. Therefore, right? wait, therefore I'll proceed. How, how shall I can help him to understand this immense problem? Okay, that's the question I thought we were addressing. I'm going to, we'll, go, we'll do it, sir. We'll do it now. How shall I do it? Okay. What, how, how shall I approach this problem with the child? Having seen a number of things, you're... Of what, tell me, sir, what, how do I approach this with a student in front of me? You know the student's condition. No, they won't listen. I said, you know the student's condition. Of course they are conditioned. And because he's conditioned, he doesn't want to listen. No, he doesn't know even. So okay, he doesn't but I, we're saying from the outside, we can see, because he's conditioned, he won't listen. No, I understand. Because we've looked at the conditioning ourselves. I take that. I take that. I take that. Because he's conditioned, he won't listen. So what shall I do? He's looking out of the window hmm, while I'm talking, right? So I say, look out of the window, but look with all your eyes. Right. Hmm? And he gets tired of that. Huh? And then he gets tired of it. No, but then he, you, so he, looks, he goes to. The You're missing time. my point, sir. Don't. <laughs> I say to him, I want to talk to him about conditioning, right? But he doesn't want to listen to it. I understand. So he's looking out of the window. Hmm? I see him looking out of the window. I say, now, look out of the window and look at all the shapes and the colors and the shadows of. Hmm? Are you seeing all that? And the child doesn't look. Nene. Because you as soon as as soon as I verbally say, I say, hey, are you seeing that? Are you No, I want that? to no, I don't say that, sir. Please, for God's sake. I want when he's not listening to me and he's looking out of the window, I'm not concerned that he should listen to me. I understand that. I'm concerned that she should look out of the window. And I'm helping to look out of the window so clearly. But you're using words or you're pointing, you're doing something no, no, to, to I'm not get doing him it. to look, I, right? No, sir. I'm helping him to look you're, out of the window. Okay, you're pointing. No, I'm not or pointing. Whatever you want to call it. I should do, do, do uh, you see, there are two different things, sir. Please listen. <coughs> I want to talk about unconditioning, right? And he wants to look out of the window. So I put my own uh, desire to talk about unconditioning. I said, no, let's both look at that. Let's go where he is, not where you want him to be. I Both of us, let's look. Right, and then go with that. So, yeah, I see that. So I make, I help him to look at the shadows, the beauty of light, the various... Follow? He gets interested. Are you missing the point? He gets okay. interested. I understand what you're saying. But say, in fact, that you have a youngster that doesn't look at anything. So he's, look, so he's looking at something, at a picture book. He's listening to his uh, next neighbor talking. He's doing something. Yeah. So I said, do it, let's both of us do it together. together. I forgot my unconditioned, I'm not interested. Got it. Got it. Understood. So, when I talk about my conditioning, he's interested. Because I've helped him to look 
at whatever he is looking at. Oh, you don't see all this. No, we have to, uh, I see that, we have to go where they are. We can't have these ideas of what we want. That's, that's just... We have to see where they are, find out where they're coming from, and go there with them. That's it, he wants to look out the window. No. What he does, what when he says, don't look at it, sir. Don't look at it. 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 Don't doing it together? No. no. What is so happening? He's becoming attentive. Yeah. And you miss it. So don't agree. He becomes attentive because we both are looking at it. Both are... He is interested in it. I am interested. So he becomes attentive. So I've helped him to be attentive. When he's looking at the microphone, I said, let's both look attentive. So when I talk about conditioning, he's attentive. That's all. <laughs> when I tell him, don't look out of the window, that's a resist. You follow? His own thing gone. And sometimes when children don't want to listen, it's because that's what they've been told. You listen to me now. And then. Attend to me. And that's when they resist. That's when they. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> children coming to the school and you're going to say look see with them you're doing this with them I'm so not doing anything with them you're, you're saying <laughs> I am I am doing what they want to do that's what I mean okay you're doing that's what I meant maybe I didn't use the right words but that's what I meant you're doing what what they want to do and they want to wrestle with one another and I say all right let's find out all about wrestling what is implied in wrestling. They, and and it says, uh, listen, what is implied in wrestling. Angry, hmm? brutal. Let's find out what it means. Pay attention to it. See, so you're missing this. I understand what you're saying. The beauty of The youngster it. cuts you off before you can even ask no, or inquire no. into what the wrestling is with. So it looks at what is happening now between us all. You are my students, right? <laughs> right. You are listening to me, aren't you? Right, sir. Because I am passionately interested in looking. When you are looking, I am looking too. I'm passionately interested to see the light, the shadow, what the beauty of the line is. What is it I want? So that he has capacity to attain. Yes, I understand. That's all. So how can you attend to the wrong thing? So there's no such thing as attending to the wrong thing. Attend, well, attend. No, attending. Yes. Then I talk, he attends. Perhaps very quickly we can try taking a look at this, uh, the, the nature of attention. Oh, that, so... <laughs> just, just very quickly, maybe I could say, if, you, if one attends, let's see, if one is not attending, they're indulging in their but own But you, sir, so you are not attending. So I'm indulging... I am, you are, I am talking and you're not attending. You are attending to your own thoughts. Right? Sorry, I'm not criticizing, sir. I'm not talking. I understand from. that. I'm not sure that's the case. And if you are attending to what I'm saying, hmm, you would follow it right through. You wouldn't say, well, I don't understand. But I haven't said that I don't understand. No, I have I followed you through. No, sir. I understand. No. Look, sir. 
We are both are concerned with unconditioning, right? Yes. Right? Yes. Are you giving your whole attention to the problem? All your reservations, or you say, no, it's not possible, it is possible, where am I unconditional? You are poking around. I'm giving my whole attention to... To what? To your speaking. Hmm? To your... to our searching. Uh, no! <laughs> are you giving your whole attention to the question, question of conditioning? You don't know what it means, but you say, well, I'm giving my attention to it. That means you are excluding your own personal conclusions, prejudices, right, opinions. You are attending to something. So you, and you, you put away your prejudices, and I put away my prejudices. I don't know. We start, both of us not knowing. Are you doing it? Yes. So, if you say I am, then we both then look at that problem, that question of unconditioning or conditioning. So we say, what is this in conditioning? Why has human humanity, through the ages, conditioned itself? Why? From father to son, you follow? Hey, group to group, community to community. Why? Why has the mind accepted it? Because they want security. So. Do I want security that way? Is that what is my mind seeking? What was your answer to why they're doing this? Why have the human beings accepted the conditioning? I understand the question. I didn't understand your answer. I, I will. I'm putting the question. Oh. Why have the human beings accepted it? Why have the human beings said, for two thousand years, Christ, Christ, Jesus, Jesus. What? The myth of it. Now you said. So. I don't think I know the answer to that. Now you said it was for security. No, no. Human minds demand security. I believe in a myth. I may be real. Maybe false, maybe not have taken place at all, but I believe in that myth. That's it. Then I feel safe in that. So I, right? It may be neurotic belief, but it may be truthful, but I. But some authority. That's it. Authority and the desire to be safe in some, psychologically in some field. I know my wife, therefore I'm secure. Goes with a concept. You might have some concept I in your mind and you find security in that. It's the words that give you security. What is the time, sir? Almost one o'clock. Huh? Almost one o'clock. Oh, I think we'll stop, don't you?